You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pencils. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers. Time Hello and welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White. With me, as always, is my co-host, Lacey Finley. Happy Monday! And I hope everyone enjoyed their Mother's Day celebrations. If that's something you celebrate, some people (laughs) don't, and that's fine. I got wished a happy Mother's Day on the phone at work the other day, and I was like, oh, okay. I'll have a good Sunday. Yeah. Just assume I have kids. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything to the dude, but I was just like, oh, I didn't actually remember it was this weekend anyway. But yeah, he just told I, me happy Mother's Day. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And I can I can understand that. I think t- to wish it upon someone if you have no idea if they have kids yeah. is kind of an odd thing to do. If you know someone has kids, sure. I think you they know, just I've- assume older woman. Of course she has kids. Thankfully, it was me. Because, like, I just go, whatever. Yeah. But I could see other people losing their mind about, why would you just assume? About and I just went, okay, and moved on. I was just like, I'll have a nice Sunday. Thank you, is how I took it and just moved which, on. Which is an appropriate response. I don't feel like you should just go all, how dare you assume? And I was like, well, I mean, it is a little rude to just assume. But sure. there's no reason to, like, lose my mind about it. No. Right. <laughs> You just, that's, that's one of those things you can just be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And just be done with, you know, it's not offensive. I don't, ima- I can't imagine. Yeah. I'd be like, you know, I'm as- probably going to have a better Sunday than you. Right. <laughs> I didn't have to spend anything. <laughs> I didn't have to do crap. <laughs> that's right. You didn't have to get out and try to take someone to dinner at mm-hmm. these cr- crummy mm-hmm. restaurants and everyone's just crammed in at the mm-hmm. same time, same place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The one time of year that they all say we're giving mom a break from cooking. But let's be real. I think we've all moves, moved past the uh, we're cooking at home every day. Yeah. That's not happening anymore. So when people are like, I need a break. And I'm like, but from what, though? And look, <laughs> and look, you know, to it to be fair, I, I also feel like we've gotten away from that stereotype of women that they're all in the kitchen cooking. Oh, yeah, that was kind of my biggest point. Like, we're not doing that seven days a week, three meals a day like we used to, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I understand that. that there may still be someone out there who is that that woman. I kind of hope so. You're probably eating better food and saving a little money. Perhaps, yeah. But <laughs> men are doing that, too. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I, I cook, mm-hmm. you know. I, it's not un common last three nights I, i've cooked dinner and i've washed up the dishes and i've there taken care of everything mm-hmm. that's just how it is sometimes yeah. it is and sometimes it isn't it just it, it's a give and take i feel like exactly. it's a good give and take and see then you can cook and pamper her all day on sunday right mm-hmm. and then you don't have to take her out well she might want to i don't know you do what she wants to do it's her day right <laughs> right <laughs> but uh i got two things i want to talk about Mm -hmm. up top real quick first of all i wanted to give a bit of a shout out to someone Mm -hmm. who we recently reconnected with and maybe they're listening to the show right now uh that's our old friend gabriel loud noises loud noises is how you'll know him in discord Mm -hmm. if if you go back to the way way back machine (laughs) in the podcast Mm -hmm. probably episode Six, seven. I think I'm, it was before I was hosting. That's right. I this had been a like, guest, I think, at that point once, but I wasn't. That's that's the- what I always try to remember. For some reason, it's it's hazy in my mind. I think it was episode six, and you were episode seven. I'm almost positive that's. I don't s- remember what somewhere in that. Number, but yeah, yeah, sounds about right. So we did a feature on a game that he did called Crumple. Mm-hmm. We got to play it. And then, obviously, we talked to him about the game at the time. And 
I thought it was a fun game. I thought there was a so very cute. interesting concept. Yeah, yeah, it was a great design, great concept. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping to see it kind of, you know, blow up. And and over time we just kind of lost connection, but he he Light found habits. my number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he found my number, reached out, and and we kind of reconnected. He pointed me to his new YouTube page, which mm -hmm. I can post down below. It's got video of the game and everything like that. If you want to mm -hmm. see that, plus he's got a follow up because Crumple, the the game that we played, was supposed mm -hmm. to be like episode one, right? Or was episode one, and then he was going to do a follow up. Sure. So. He's working on that, mm -hmm. and then he's got another project that he's working on. It's called Project Mahalia. I think I've said that correctly. Yeah, I don't know. I watched different, the thing, but I don't know. Yeah, that sounds correct. Yeah, so a different, you know, a different look, but you know, unique art style. Sure. And he even said that the gameplay style is like platforming slash point and click. Okay. So I'm I'm kind of interested in that. Right. And he's always got some very interesting uh, personal stories that he tells within these games. So mm -hmm. that's something I'm looking forward to. And I wanted to give a shout out so all of you listening out there can go take a look at that. The YouTube page, I'll post a link down below, but it's called November Rain. And that's R-E-I-G-N. So like gotcha. a reign of terror. Sure. But I know that's not what he meant. A reign of good. <laughs> Rain know. of Good, yeah. Rain so good. November Rain, yeah. if you want to go take a look at that. Still right NASA now. games though, yeah. Uh no, I think he's he's uh done away with that. So oh, okay. it's it's like the video starts with that logo mm -hmm. and everything and then it kind of fades away to November Rain. So oh. I think that's kind of the idea is like rebranding. Gotcha. So okay. you're aware. But uh oh Gabe's listening, you know, if uh he, he's out there that's and neat. and I know he was asking about the pod. So mm -hmm. Go check his stuff out. I think, yeah. uh, and keep your eye on it Good for for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, because I'm, I want to play. I can't wait to play Crumple episode two. That's, that's where yeah, I'm at. It looks with like that. it's gotta be. I don't know. I shouldn't say things. I don't know how it goes <laughs> when you're a single person developing a thing. I'm sure it takes forever. I was like, but watching the trailer from what was a few months back, it mm. looked like some good headway was made. But I don't know if sure. that was when it was just first announced or what. We've lost touch. We've lost yeah, touch. Yeah. So. It's so, been years. I can't believe it. Yeah, but he's in the Discord now. So if you want to talk to him about his game, you're, yeah. you know, just hit him up. Loud or noises. Keep screaming is what is... at him like we've all been doing because it's loud. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Just I think however you want to go about. It. Just saying. Him and yeah. I did get together. I think I might have still been a little bit louder. Just, mm -hmm. I'm sure people that were with us were like, "Oh my god." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear each other though. Ah. <laughs> Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about real quick was a new show that premiered this week. Now, it, it was one of these shows that dropped all their episodes at once. So if you wanted to watch it all, you could. I was just going to say, you're going to try a new show right now and risk not getting to see the rest of it. Well, luckily, a lot of uh, what... Right now, this is where everybody's kind of starting to go on their breaks. Mm -hmm. So it's freeing up time. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of my other shows have been ending. So I've, I've had gaps. So I thought... All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, something that I saw a trailer for, and I was immediately intrigued because I had a similar idea years ago thinking this would be a great idea for a show. Okay. Now, this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. My wife, she's... Uh, Watching it with you because she loves you. She, I think she's realizing she enjoys these characters versus some of the other characters. And what I'm talking about, because right. I'm being very vague, trying yeah, to lead up to it, is Disney Plus dropped a new show called Muppets Mayhem. And it's focused <laughs> on the electric mayhem. Okay. So you're not focused on any of the other characters within the Muppets, mm -hmm. just the electric mayhem. And the concept is pretty much, they've been a band for 50 years Never cut an album, but everyone has like this, oh man, I love, like they actually had musical artists talking about, oh man, the Electric Mayhem, they were just the best and just talking about like all these things, these memories and these shows that they remember, but they never once cut an album. It's like everybody <laughs> practiced with them in the garage. So yeah. we thought they were going to be big, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> it, the, so essentially the concept is they, they find out like this, uh, Assistant to a music executive finds out that they had a contract with this label to make an album. 
and the label is about to go under. So she figures if she can get them to cut an album, maybe that'll save the label, yada, yada, whatever. And so she tries to make it her mission to get them to make an album. Well, if you know anything about the Electric Mayhem, they are very unfocused yeah, individuals. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they'll, they'll start, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then they the just, mayhem, maybe. The mayhem, exactly. <laughs> and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but like I said, I had this idea at one point. I thought, I think it would be cool to have a show about these characters. I think that mm-hmm. you could do something around that, around the music, around the concept, and then obviously they have done that. And one of the inst- or the uh, producers behind this and writers is uh, Adam Goldberg, who is the Adam Goldberg from the Goldbergs. Okay. So yeah, okay. it has that nostalgic feel to it mm-hmm. of the times, but they're trying to keep it modern, but also staying true to the characters, which I appreciate too. They weren't trying to modernize them for new audiences. They're still those characters that you remember. Oh, that's fine. And I don't want to say too much because I'd like people to go check it out because mm-hmm. there are just elements to it. And I appreciate what they're doing because it's like they're teetering a line, which I so appreciate. Mm-hmm. For example, they come into this shack, like they're staying in the shack and they go down in the basement. And this is apparently where they used to jam out all the time. So all their equipment's still down there. Mm-hmm. And as they happened to be looking around, who did they happen to find off in the corner was Cheech and Chong <laughs> as okay. themselves. Of course. And they were just like, hey. they were like, hey, man, where'd you go? I thought you went out for a pizza, man. We've been waiting here all this time, man. <laughs> so you can see that. there's... Yep. Yeah, there's a little bit of that humor in there where they're not quite saying it. There was even another episode where they all kind of trip balls uh, uh, on yeah. some stuff that sure. was not drugs, but... But it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, and we had that bad food. or uh, That's yeah. pretty much what it was, <laughs> bad food. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But just little things like that. I've been like, man, this is, it's, it's creative and what they're doing, how they're approaching it. Even the last episode that we watched, I, I think i I felt like by the end of it, I thought this is my favorite episode thus far because it actually told the story of how the band got together. And yeah. the way they told the story was very interesting because you don't know who these characters were. Yeah. So they added these little wrinkles and and elements to their backstory giving, I was that just you say giving them more backstory. Yeah, that you would have never considered. But I don't know. Just again, don't want to say too much. But mm-hmm. just how they constructed them coming together, and that it wasn't just an easy. Hey, we met each other. Hey, we're in the music together. Let's go do a thing. It just seemed to be these consistent meetings mm-hmm. until it was just like maybe we're supposed to do something. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And, but it's told in such a great way that I was like, man, this is a solid episode. And even the way it ends just makes mm-hmm. it even better for me. I just okay. thought it was a solid ending for it. So I'm not done with it, but from what I've seen so far, I think about six, six episodes and there might be 10. I think that was the, Total. the drop, okay. but it's been a lot of fun. What's it if, again? Did you Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah, so I, I didn't feel the need to binge it. I just felt like I wanted to take it in spurts, but mm. I, I've I've been enjoying every minute of it. You might see some familiar faces. There's I don't want to I don't want to say who he well, is. Got lots of celebrities on the old Sesame's, so you know, yeah. like that wouldn't be rare or like unheard of. Yeah, I think a lot of the celebrities that I knew initially were kind of in the first few episodes. They've been dropping a few here and there, mm. but I feel like they're more obscure for me. Okay. Like there was like a, if they're if they're popular now, it may not click with me. Yeah, like there was a music <laughs> producer guy that they went and tried to 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 a studio. His name was Zed, and I was like, I Katrina was like, he looks familiar, and I looked him up, and it, that's who he was. He was just Zed, and I was like, so I don't know who Zed, Zed is. Yeah, Z E D D. I have E-D. no, yeah, I have no clue who this is. But oh, yeah, he doesn't look familiar at all. No idea, but a he Russian was himself. German DJ. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, so, no, I don't know. Him. <laughs> yeah, little th- little things like that, little ca- cameos that maybe other people would be like, "Oh my God, Zed!" But I was just. Uh, yeah, I mean, I each no generation idea. has their thing, and I've probably just not kept up on this ones. So if sure. they're new and celebrity now, and probably just now 
turned 20 and all that coming in. I probably don't know who you are. And it's not nothing offensive. I just don't see a lot of new stuff. I guess. No, that, and that's that's fair. But mm-hmm. but that's what I kind of appreciate. It's like they're hitting all the notes. So like Cheech and Chong would be for people like us. Oh, sure. We're like, yeah, we oh, yeah, that. we know who that is. Mm-hmm. But then Zed would be for the newer I crowd. He'd be like, oh, my God, Zed. I don't know who those old guys were, but oh, my God. Well, it's you know? usually when I see them come out on stage or something at some show maybe I'm watching and then the mm-hmm. audience loses their mind and then that's when I look at the hubs and I'm like, I think we're supposed to know who that is. Right. <laughs> he's like, I bet we are. You know? It's like, oh my God. So let's yay. go look it up and see if we are supposed to know because they're super excited they're there. So I should go check mm-hmm. out why we're supposed to be excited. So I I think it's a fun time. If you're just looking for some good humor, it's, it. like I said, it's mm-hmm. it's everything that I've kind of wanted with this kind of concept where they're being adult, but maybe not a little too adult, but just adult enough. Well, I mean, if it's Muppet stuff, we can't go too adult. Like what's fun in there? But I argue, Uh I don't know if you know this or not, because I did some research some time back and I found out Jim Henson wanted the Muppets to kind of be an adult oriented, not like, super R-rated or anything. Right. Not like, what was that movie that came out with Melissa McCarthy that his son did? Uh, 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 fuck. The Happy Time Murders. Oh, yes. I think that's, yeah. Yes. Okay, so that was, I mean, that was done by Brian Henson, Jim Henson's son. Sure, yeah, okay. And that was like... that far, though. No, well, just... yeah, that one went super R-rated. Now, oh, okay. I don't think that's what Jim Henson intended, but... He was trying to get the Muppets, like the ones that we know, like Kermit and Fozzie and all that. He was trying to get them on Saturday Night Live. Like he thought that would be a great place for those characters. But then people saw it's like puppets. Fuck that. That's children's stuff. (laughs) So he had this he had this pushback because of what it was. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, you know, you had Muppets on Sesame Street prior to that. So people already had that association. So he struggled to find a place for them because he wanted something more adult oriented, but it wasn't quite, <laughs> everyone else wasn't with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I, you guys I always felt like, my vision. yeah. So I always felt like he, he had the opportunities and the opportunities are there, mm-hmm. but there's always still that pushback because one of the themes, as we've mentioned here, as you watch these characters, you would automatically assume they're all stoned 24 <laughs> seven. <24/7. laughs> Yeah, because the of the era they came out in, though, too, we were probably still very much um, deep in that culture, you know? Like, sure, yeah, man, sure. Yeah, man, and love, and let's just do all the things, and it'll open your mind, man, mm-hmm. you know? And then, then we got TV, and then we're like, sure. oh. <laughs> like, I mean, I was saying there wasn't TV then, but I'm just like, the TV got good. And <laughs> mm-hmm. So, it... it it disappoints me a little bit when when they cannot quite be what they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Because even, again, with these characters, I remember reading, there was a, I vaguely remember it, but there was a Christmas special that was like a Muppet Christmas, oh, yeah. but not like, not one of those Christmas Carol things, but it was like a, they were in modern day New York or something like that. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't remember all the details. I just remember they were in New York mm-hmm. and there was supposed to be a scene in this special where you saw the electric mayhem hanging out with Snoop Dogg. And oh gosh. Okay. You just assume sure. nothing yeah. was shown. You just assume. Yeah. Well, the assumption was too much for the network. They couldn't handle it. And they were just like, we can't have this scene in the movie. And they this? were just like this was like in the early two thousands. Oh, and come on. Okay. Yeah, I know. And even the producers were like that but you're not you don't see anything. And we're like, but you're implying. And I was like but that's the joke. Right. You just kind of would imply. a child get that though? Wouldn't that be more for us having to watch it with our children? Like that joke, exactly. For me, not yeah. for my kid. Yeah, it's kind of like the Scooby Doo joke in the movie where you see you come down on the mystery machine and you see smoke coming out of the van, yeah. but it's just Scooby and Shaggy inside cooking. Right. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. The assumption, but it's not that. Right. The, the twist. The yeah. Twist. Yeah. So. I don't know. Just little stupid things like that. It's like, come on, man. Who are you hurting? You're not advocating for anything. You're not showing it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Nowadays, it doesn't seem like we care at all what gets shown to anything. You know? No. no. (laughs) It's it's interesting how we've we've morphed. And then I Mm. always often wonder if we'll ever get just as... 
I know this might sound weird to say, but just as cool as like UK and all that. Because I mean, they just say whatever on TV, regular Mm -hmm. butts are on regular TV. You know, I'm like, just, yeah, who cares? And I love the C word and I hate that Americans like hate it so much because God, I love it. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. I use it often, but I'm like, Americans are like, ew, it's the worst word you could say. And I'm like, no, it's really not, though. But it's really not. that means you haven't been called enough bad things yet in your life. <laughs> That's the worst mm-hmm. thing that you've ever been called because it'll get worse. <laughs> Don't <Sure. you> worry. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, some of the networks have put start. They've started to push boundaries like we haven't crossed that threshold into UK territory yet. Right, but yeah. like FX, for example, they've just said, fuck it. You know, whatever. But Anything that's a goes. premium channel, you know? Too true, too so, true. So, so yeah, I feel like that's, I don't know, we're just too puritanical and blah, 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 and you're my Jesus and your kid. And, hmm. you know, I think that's just what's holding it all up, honestly, because we're still trying to pretend we're like, you know, this religious thing. <laughs> yeah. But even, <laughs> even to some degrees, there's been like um, Comedy Central. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, they, they've allowed South Park to... Go for yeah, rain now. Yeah, after 10 p.m., you can, they don't bleep the F word anymore. Or that's how it mm-hmm. used to be. I don't know how it is anymore with streaming. You know? <laughs> but I remember right, right. cable TV after 10, they would use the F word and not bleep it. And that's when yeah. I was like, ooh. So <laughs> there there have been certain strides. Like, we're, we're doing some things that we didn't used to be able to do mm-hmm. on television. So... Well, we'll get there. I'm sure there'll be a point where, you know, in 50 years, we'll look back and be like, why was everyone so uptight about that? And, like, we're full-on sex on tv or something I'd be like well we went <laughs> we yeah. swung the pendulum the other way we tend to overcorrect that way i feel like as humans we're gonna swing oh, yeah. way far the opposite side before we come back and meet in the middle that but... is true <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh what you been playing okay i had a really lazy week with games uh but i did have another fun bitching story about me trying to use um anything ea again <laughs> because if I I didn't think it could get worse, because I mean, it's EA. Like, yeah, they've had their garbage <laughs> stuff already. You um, didn't think it could get worse with EA. <laughs> I just, you know, like we've hit the rock bottom, right? Like, shit doesn't work. Every time you do updates, you break your own thing. You know, like we've, we're just used to this, right? So, The Sims had an update I wanted to just check out. As soon as I opened up Origin, it did its update like I expected. And then all of a sudden, it said, boom, you have to use EA app now. And I'm like, I don't want to use EA app. It's garbage. I already know it's mm. garbage. I know it's more garbage than you. And I've I've complained about Origin since its existence. And I believe they finally found how to make an app worse than Origin. So, wow. of course, I go through it because I don't see any option. Like, they're not letting me do anything but tell me to download this app. So, I download the EA app. <laughs> There's no offline mode. So this was the time that it just was going to shit the bed and not connect. Mm -hmm. And it just sat there and it just sat there. And I'm like, so do you mean to tell me I'm locked away from all of my games because you built an even shittier app than you did the last time? I spent an hour last night figuring out how to get around and force use origin and I found it. So thank you to all those people who are smart and understand that this was garbage and shares that information because I uninstalled it and I used their coding and all their stuff to force that crap away. So this morning when I opened it up, oh, if I ever thought I would say, oh, I get to use origin, never thought that would be a word or a sentence I'd ever say. (laughs) Because Origin was so garbage. But at least they have an offline mode. So I can still play my games if your app is shitting the bed. Why? 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 Would you make your other app without it? Stop pretending like your games are so gold. Mm -hmm. That everybody wants to just freaking steal it. If two people steal it. And ten people buy it. Wouldn't you rather make the ten people who bought it happy? The two people who stole it aren't going to get the updates and all that kind of stuff anyway. So make those of us throwing the thousands of dollars at you happy by just fixing your shit and stop trying to DRM all of the things since the beginning of time. Your games aren't that special. They're not. Well, they, and if people want like to bu- steal so. them, they're going to. Mm-hmm. You're just making the experience worse for those who are paying money. The person who wanted to pirate it is going to pirate it regardless. This is true. So now those of us paying money are paying the price because... You're so scared somebody's going to steal that one game from you and do what with it? And do what? <laughs> you know, like, get over yourselves, EA. I don't know. So I'm going to keep 
force using that until it goes away. I don't know. I just feel like I should be able to demand all of my money back. If you're just going to keep making me go online or forcing me to be locked out of it because you can't, for the love of God, in 20 years, figure out how to make a stable app. 20 years. I've been waiting for you to figure out how to make something that just connects and stays there and does what it's supposed to. EA, just, you know, Mm -hmm. not like they care because we've all bitched about them forever and they continue on. They continue on. Um, But outside of that, I just watched a bunch of movies this week. Okay. I did that. And and then, of course, just wanted to wish everyone a happy Tears of the Kingdom release weekend week. Those of you who are excited about it, it's probably what you did all weekend until Mm -hmm. you took your mom out, right? Sure. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Or they didn't care and they just played Tears of the Kingdom. It was like, mom can wait. Or maybe mom wanted to play Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, maybe. Let's we do don't that. know. We don't know. Mom's We're lucky. making assumptions. Yeah. But uh, since I was a big fat dud with games this week, what'd you play? <laughs> uh, well, I went back to Resident Evil 8 after I finished Final Fantasy 4 for a moment. Mm-hmm. And I, one thing I have to appreciate with this game that I guess I just hadn't really noticed until I came back with it is it feels like it's moving fast. It's not trying to waste my time. And I appreciate the freak and hell out of that. Because I'm not... From what I see, since it's village, Mm -hmm. you you have all these different areas that you can explore outside. You'll get a key that'll unlock a gate, and then that'll take you to the next thing. And then you've got to collect all the things, which I guess will take you to the big boss. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm assuming is happening. And each time I go to a new area where a new person is that has the item in which I need to move on, the areas seem like they're Mm self-contained. It's not like some giant sprawling mansion. It's just some little self-contained thing. It's something different. Everything kind of plays differently. So you're not going to this one and then you're having to go through the same garbage again and again. They've made all these little areas unique. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And they don't waste your time. They just they put you to it, get nice. through it, done. And I got through, I don't know if I, I mentioned that from the last time I played it, but I got through, there was a, a doll, a crazy doll, and a crawling baby that was oh, crying. God, no. That was insane. That was just like, you know, hide and seek with that thing. Were you playing at VR? Oh, I thought about it. Yeah, I have know. considered it because I do have that update. Yeah, but no. I also remember my my experiences with seven, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but nope, that's a nope I, for me, dog. <laughs> but that I got through that pretty quick, and then there was another area where you run into this deformed thing that has one of the items you need, and then he tries to capture you uh, using this goo, and then you go out to this lake, and then mm-hmm. he turns into a big ass fish or something okay. and you've got to drain the reservoir where he's swimming around in and i i did that but it didn't feel like it took flopper, forever though well see he was just a little like mongoloid looking fella and then suddenly he turned into this big fish so i don't know if he's gonna morph back or oh. or what like i said all the last thing i did was drain the reservoir and i was like all right i'm time out hey <laughs> this is where you sit for tonight because at the same time as i'm playing that because you know i want to finish that I still had the Final Fantasy itch. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I downloaded Final Fantasy VI and then started playing <laughs> that, too. There you go. <laughs> and <clears throat> the the same kind of things apply here where everything just feels bigger. Right. So that was just kind of jarring to me. Uh, the music, kind of what they did with Part 4, some of it, I'm, I'm really digging the, the new compositions, the new arrangements, others. I'm going to do without... Mm-hmm. Uh, I noticed that the experience building in this one is much different. And I, I probably remember that if I thought about it for a time. Mm-hmm. But I'm a, I think with this game, when you have multiple people in your party, mm-hmm. it divides it. So say if you had one character, they're going to get all that experience. But then if you have two, then it splits it. And then okay. if you got three, it splits it three ways and so on and so that on. kind of makes sense, though. Because I noticed that the level building has been a little slower, even despite having it up to 4X, it's still moving slower. And I'm okay with that. But I do remember this being a much larger game. Sure, so. so. Let's yeah, pick, it pick it up. Speed it up. A little pick bit. Up. Yep, yep. No. But in, in all fairness, I felt like I've also blazed through a lot of it 
faster than I remember as well. Mm -hmm. Because there's a spot in the game that I always loved where your party essentially splits into three different sections. So Mm -hmm. they give you the option and say, you got to follow this story, that story, that story. Take your pick. Doesn't matter. You just go whichever way you want to go. And I felt like for each one that I did, I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to be at this a while, so I just better buckle up. Mm-hmm. No. I was done. I was like, all right, well, that was <laughs> a lot like, faster than I remember. Yeah. Maybe it was the wrong area. You're missing this. I don't know. So I even got to, there's a part in the story where you have to, like your main character is this girl named Tara, mm-hmm. and she has a secret so I don't want to, again, I know it's an old game, but wow. spoilers, if you want to play it for yourself, there's a lot to the story you don't might not want to know. Sure. So it she like has there's a thousand hours of story. So if you spoil one piece, I'm not sure hmm. it's in the grand scheme of things, but I don't, people are weird. Possibly. But <laughs> she, she has a secret and I have unearthed in the story. I know what her secret is and we're trying to track her down because she ran away and that's that's all I'll kind of say with that. So how is she going to be a good actor now? If you discovered her secret, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, but I am I am excited because I'm so close to the opera scene, and I heard mm-hmm. that that's the one section of the game that they really did a did a number on. So I, I can't I've wait to see what that's going to be. I've seen a video of someone playing that scene. Now I have no frame of reference, so mm-hmm. I wasn't impressed or anything, you know, because I'd right. be like, oh, God, from before. But I thought it looked fun. So you'll okay. have to let me know when you do it. I'll, I'll definitely let you know. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about at this point is where I was able to pull a platinum out of my ass with four. <laughs> oh, did you do it? Do it. Yeah, I did. I did get my platinum for four. This one, I had this gut feeling that I've already ruined it uh, because... Because I think one of the uh, prerequisites is you got to find all the hidden items and all the chests. Now, in the last one, you have the opportunity to go back and find all these chests in most of the places that you go. Mm -hmm. And I tried to stay very cognizant as I'm playing this on where I go, make sure I got all the treasures. There was this enemy camp that you go into at one point, and I was tracking all the treasures. And it said I had one more to go, and I thought, okay, well, let me get to that. I activated the story scene, Mm -hmm. and then the story plays out, and I never got to find the last treasure. Uh, So I don't. Yeah, and I can't. I didn't seem to be able to go back to that camp, so I was like, "Shit." Uh, Yeah, that sucks. So I, but that that could have been just in that moment. So I'm gonna try again later. I don't. I got this gut feeling that maybe I can go back there, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So fingers crossed, I can. I can go back to that spot, but you if I can't... look it up if you wanted to, but if you're wanting to discover it on your own, I could understand that. Yeah, I just... I'd really hate to think that it got ruined by one little thing like that, and I'm going to be able to pull all these other things off. Is this because, a remake? Like a reboot? A reimagining? Uh, whatever we're calling things. I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, they, they just remastered okay. it. Because I was wondering, like... With it being an older game, you might have 100% missed the boat. I didn't know if with these newer ones that they were kind of updating so that you weren't. I could mm. see an older game because they our games are brutal. Sure. Like, they didn't care if you beat them, I don't think, really. <laughs> like So I could see them going, well, sorry. But, well, we didn't have achievements then either. What am I saying? So continue. Sure. <laughs> well, I think... I think to some degree they have adjusted a few things out of the game, like if there were any glitches or any kind of exploits. Because I know in part four there was an exploit that people found, and it had something to do with an item called the Red Tail. And what that would get you is like, was it, a, was it either? I think it was a, a suit of armor. Okay. So you take you take the Red Tail, you give it to this guy, he'll give you an item, and then that gives you like a, a super armor, it's like the strongest armor in the game, uh-huh. and then if you could exploit the Red Tail thing where you could duplicate it, you could just hand him one, he'd give you the armor, and then just uh, get unlimited versions of this armor so everyone would have one. Oh, so only one person in your party would get one? Right, because the item was supposed to be rare, so you trade that one Red Tail oh, for so, the yeah. item, and then that's it. But show, yeah. whatever that how it was supposed to go. Yeah. I don't ever remember doing that, though, because it might have been pre. Or you didn't know there was an exploit there and you just moved yeah. on with your day. You know? Sure. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, there's a lot of things I learned after the fact. I was like, well, shit, I didn't know that at the time. I didn't. Right. But 
yeah, I don't know about this. I, I don't know if they're... I, I, I'm still trying to remember a lot because even as I'm playing, I, I'll come across a, a like the town in which I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. When I came across it, I was like, holy shit, I remember this town. Like I for, completely forgot about it. Yeah. But then I remembered everything about it the moment I saw it. And I thought, shit, I've got to come back here later. And then there's mm-hmm. a, this other thing I got to find here. And just remembering all these little details. And even hidden characters. Like I've forgotten about all these hidden characters that are in the game that you can find later on. Well, this is fun because then you get to like rediscover it a little yeah. bit along the way. So that's fun. So yeah, it's, and again, I've played this game to death mm-hmm. when I was younger and I guess time just yeah, made it all kind of pass. fade away yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I, I want to believe I could, I can reach that platinum here, but I've just got this gut feeling. I'm going to, I'm going to miss it. Because I'm going to miss something because mm-hmm. there's so many little details. I kind of know that feels because the only time mm-hmm. I was thinking of that was when I was playing Persona 5 this last time. Just because yeah. I, I said, I know there's going to be more story there if I keep digging or have to do this. So that's the only time I can empathize or I'm like, mm-hmm. did I miss all the things? Because that was very time dependent. So if yeah. the date moved on, I actually might have been screwed. Like, <laughs> And I think another thing, too, that I might... I'll probably forget somewhere down the line, as I remember, since there are so many characters in this game, Mm -hmm. they have these, sometimes there can be story beats that maybe you miss because maybe you don't have certain characters in your party at the same time or little things like that. Yeah. I'm I'm sure I've already missed one and just not known it. So, you know, and I don't want to go through a guide and just make sure that I've always got the right characters at the right time, you know? Putting in new characters could make it a new game for you because when I was obsessed with Dragon Age, the first one, still a great game, still the only one that I think really counts in the series. But same thing. If I bought different people, it was a completely different story beat, new people I could probably romance. Like, I don't know, man. They just can't capture that same lightning as they did in that first one. And I'm really sad Mm -hmm. that this next one looks like it's just going to be Le Poo. But anyway, (laughs) but my point was I could understand you get new story, new ways they would react to whatever's going on. New, You know, so, yeah, pick new people. Yeah. Make it fun. I'll, I'm going to try. If you remember gonna... who you used. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> the biggest part of it is I, I, I kept looking at my party the very first time they told me to make my own party. And mm-hmm. I thought, well, who do I normally take and who would be different this time? Because I even thought, like, when I got to that new town, yeah, I was quite a ways away from the the spot where I started to change my party. And when I got there, there was an enemy that I encountered. And I thought, you know what? I should have brought this character because, man, she could take care of this character real right. quick. So I've thought about going back and just going to get her. And I thought, is it worth it? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm debating. You sound like me where I just end up caving to the thing that I know and love mm. anyway. <laughs> it's like, yeah. this playthrough, I'm going to be a jerk. And then the yeah. moment comes up and I'm like, I can't do it. I yeah. can't do it. <laughs> it's like, it's not even a real situation. But I'm like, I can't do it. That's right. We're just, we're not built that way, I guess. I always want to, and I think it sounds so fun. But then when the moment's there and this, like, you know, not real character's looking at me in the face, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't be beat. <laughs> I can't. So what do you got in the way of news for we us got, this week? Yeah, we got a little bit to uh, chat about here. Uh, it was kind of uh, a big Ubisoft boo-boo week, I feel. Well, I always hate them these days, I feel. <laughs> um, so they're joining the ranks of laying off people, of everybody else, it seems like, in the uh, mm. the developing team world. Uh, or, or, or I guess whatever you want to call them. Let's buy all the places and lay off all the things. Um, so as we know, they've kind of been underperforming, I feel, lately. They don't really release any games <laughs> Unless it's Assassin's Creed or Far Cry. Oh, yeah, that's true. That one did finally come out right. Um, Mm. So, yeah, it just kind of seems like it was a stream of bad news for them. Uh, So it looks like, and I mean, if you also remember, they were having that trouble at their Montpellier, if I'm saying the Mm. the name of the city right, studio going for the labor investigation that was still going on there. Um, A few other locations of of theirs in Europe have closed due to I'm going to quote external factors, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then they just released a statement about laying off uh, 60 workers, which uh, Ubisoft offices that have been affected, you know, all the you want to come back, come back to the office. Oh, JK, mm-hmm. you're fired. Like, Wait. yay. OK, good. Yeah. Good for you guys. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but the thing of the matter is nobody saw it coming. There was no warning 
uh, like talking about a restructuring effort and all of this stuff happening beforehand. It was just like you just found out you were out of job one day. So, and I mean, I guess I, I hate it. I know why they do it. They don't want you to leave. They want you to still be their good little worker bee until they want you out the door. I just hate it because you're screwing over this human who could have been looking for another way to support themselves in the meantime and probably would have stayed till the last day. Yeah. Maybe not at Ubisoft because you've been treating them like garbage for many years now, but like you probably could have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like you need to give more people the benefit of the doubt. I don't, but again you treat me like garbage like this I, I might have done the same thing who knows um <laughs> but uh, it was just kind of citing the reasons for the layoff was due to its customer relations center team evolving the organization um so it was like in newcastle uk Kerry, north carolina offices those were the ones that seemed to have the most since it was 60 people that was the the affected one um and it just seems like I feel like they could turn things around if they would just kind of use their brain again, because lately I'm seeing them wanting to do their own Ubisoft streaming service, which I know that they've been wanting to do for a while. They mm. charge kind of an exorbitant amount for what you get. If you're a huge Ubisoft junkie, that probably seems like a really good deal to you. Um, but if you could see just how that's been kind of failing and they're insisting on doing it, now they're going to start throwing it on like other services because well, no one's buying it on its own. Yeah. You know, it was like even when I saw it on PlayStation, I guess you could add Ubisoft to it. But I don't know if people like, would you just, well, I don't know. I guess I would need to find someone who's super hardcore Ubisoft, but would you pay that money for just Ubisoft games? Well, it depends because I guess I I would have to be in the mood to play just their games. Like if I knew that this is the only place and there was a good library, because even Amazon Luna, they have a channel. It's like Ubisoft Plus channel. Oh, yeah. And then it's like $7.99 and you get a a library. But but again, that's not bad, but I thought their Ubisoft Plus was 18 bucks a month. It could be. It was exorbitant for just having Ubisoft games. Well, I could I could be mistaken. Mm-hmm. What but that's it is the plus. Who knows? Maybe there's like just right, right. Yeah. So they they could be doing what what PlayStation is doing, where they've got it in tiers and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know what you're getting in the the larger. Yeah, package. like what's the difference? Exactly. So, <laughs> but even even when I've looked at what they're offering mm-hmm. within those bundles, I mean. Sure, I guess it sounds good on paper yeah. if you think about it. So, see if I if I saw whatever fucking all right. Let's say Far Cry Six because I've not played it. Okay. So Far Cry Six is on their Plus service on Amazon Luna, and they say seven ninety nine. You can play it right now. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. But when I'm done with that, what do I have? Well, do you want to play Assassin's Creed? Do you want to play another Far Cry game? Do you want to play? Watch Dogs, you want to play... Just Dance, maybe. We'll just Dance. <laughs> you start looking at their offerings and be like, all right, so you're talking about... T- you're offering me the same game multiple times, just different settings. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. I- See, that's that's part of the problem. There's a lot of games that are the same game. <laughs> yeah, well, we've spoken about that before. You know, like, if you yeah. love Assassin's Creed, please, by all means, I don't want to knock anybody. You love a game, play your games, be a gamer. But I feel like it's always just rehashing the same thing in a new setting with slapping a new name on the main character. I played three, and they were spread out. I played the first one. I played Black Flag. And I think I tried that other one where they were in Egypt because everyone was Mm -hmm. bragging about how good it was, and the hubs got it on something. Like, was it on a PlayStation freebie? Mm -hmm. One of them that came out on a PlayStation freebie. So I tried a little bit of that, and I was like, this just feels like the other ones. Now, the setting's different. Yeah. Yeah. The story was probably fine if I wanted to just sit there and watch the story. But, but, but I felt like to I be fair, I mean, I, I'm I'm one of the uh, like uh, every time there's a new them? Assassin's Creed, yeah, every time there's one that's coming around, I've played them. Now I did miss Origins, the one that you mentioned. Yeah. I I haven't played Odyssey. I have them. I can play them. Yeah. I just have not done it yet, and I'll get around to it when when I get back in that mood. But. Yeah. I, if you said I'm gonna binge and I'm gonna play Assassin's Creed Origins and then go right into Odyssey, I couldn't do it because I'm just like, but I just, just feels like the game played. never ended. <laughs> you yeah. didn't know where one stopped and the other began. I mean, the story, like you said, probably great, but I still have to play the same game, right, <laughs> to get there, <laughs> to 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 watch it. So, yeah. 
when I'm in the mood to play an Assassin's Creed game again, I will. But and at least there's a variety to mix it up for you, right? So if you're in the mood for the game, you're like, I want this story today, I guess. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and trust me, going to uh, what was the one I think I played? Was there one after Syndicate? The one where they were in London? There probably was that, was. that was probably Origins, maybe. I, I lost think. track after like the fifth one. So, yeah, I skipped. Like I said, I didn't play Origins, didn't play Odyssey. I remember all the the hubbub about them both, and mm-hmm. everyone was like, "Oh my god, they're so awesome!" Right. But yeah. then I just jumped into Valhalla, and there was all that present day story yeah. going on, and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, in this one because. The past does. I mean, that doesn't matter. They're going to right. tell you that story from beginning to end. But the future or the present day, mm-hmm. I have no clue what's going on. New characters, new people, old faces. And I'm like, how you got here beats me. Did they but have a present day one. Did they come back to us? Did well, there are those two. Them? Was it the couple, the the married couple that have been helping? Uh, oh, I can't even remember his name now. The main guy from the first three games. Uh, it starts with a D. I know it does. I don't know how to Google properly. I've not played them, so I was trying to. Can you marry in Valhalla? That's what pops up for me. I'm like, I asked you. I asked you. I, I'm almost positive they were a couple, but they, they've they been helping. Uh, anyway, yeah. I feel like I've got a name right there and they took my tongue and I can't spit it out. Dave. Uh, Dave. B- b- but yeah. D- 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 Starts with a D, maybe I should say. <laughs> not Devin, uh, d- uh, d- not Dexter. D- I'm like not, I'm getting Ezio, who's Ezio's wife. Who's See, they're a- just, they're not. Yeah, I don't know how to Google though. To all right, let me, let me, let me do some Googling or we're right. going to be here all day. Yeah, we are. Confuses players oh, gee. with liberation. Now we're getting old stuff here. <laughs> the story is about, wait a minute. Hang on. I'm getting there. Uh, uh, uh. We're getting somewhere. Hang on. Oh, oh goodness. Where are we at? Come on. You got to tell me a name. Got to give me a name. I just Where's don't know which name? game. I'm just going back to the OG because oh, I need to get. the original Assassin's Creed? Yeah, because there was Desmond. God damn it. Oh, Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. I was looking legitimately Googling for a couple. No. Okay. So De- Desmond had, like, there's a group that you follow mm-hmm. within those first few games, and there's a man and a woman, and I'm almost positive they got together. I don't know if they were a couple at the time, but yeah, they've know. been together all this time since, okay. trying to unravel all the secrets of Abstergo. They know the the tech and everything, and they're mm-hmm. always the ones who are helping whomever is going into the Animus. Yeah. They're just there. They're, they're your proper sidekicks, if you will. Yes. So... Yeah. How they got there in, in Valhalla, I don't know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, I guess if they're still using the animus mm-hmm. to go back and forth. I was wondering if they'd ever come back, you know, yeah. to like today's times or something where the first one kind of, well, the first one was placed in today's time. You were just. Yeah. And then you yeah. kind of go back in time. Back so they're still kind of playing with that. I think after they, spoilers, killed Desmond in three I think that's where he I died. I think it's like 30 years old now, guys. No, I'm quite kidding. Yeah. Like 20 for sure. <laughs> but where he where he supposedly died, or I'm assuming he died, then they had, they needed someone else. And uh-huh. I think it was in Black Flag. They they kind of had this faceless avatar. I was going to be like, it was, it was just, a different person. That yeah, they played. were just like, okay, so now at Abstergo, it's going to be whomever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, but that's not as fun. So then... I'm assuming in Origins they found a, found another person that could be kind of like Desmond, and she became the person. The, the and again, I I don't I don't know all that that backstory, mm-hmm. so I couldn't speak to it. So anybody that does, you can tell us. All yeah, about please it. let us know. I don't anyway, know, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like it's a bad time over there with Ubisoft, regardless of which way you're going. Like, hmm. I still have never heard anything about them you know, cleaning their house or doing anything like that. So, um, yeah, it just seems like they don't want to release games. They haven't figured out how to do a proper service. They're creating AI for NPC care, you know, and then laying people off. I don't know. I don't know if we're watching the death of Ubisoft or not. I don't know. Uh, one can hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want the people to be taken care of for sure. Sure. No, no, but, no. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I don't know. I just think with that streaming service being, you know, whatever price it was, you know, for just having its own thing, I could see people maybe wanting to add it onto a service they already have. Because, I mean, 18 bucks for only mm. Ubisoft games or $11 for Game Pass. Just saying. Yeah. Like, read the room is all I'm saying, Ubisoft. <laughs> read the room. Uh, anywho, moving on from them, as we always continually talk about, and I kept thinking we'd be over it by now, was the Activision Blizzard acquisition with Microsoft. And this week's kind of funny. I don't know that I understand life anymore or what this is even doing. So we all know UK's like, screw you. We want to hmm. make sure that our people have ways to get into the cloud services and all this kind of stuff. We don't want you to monopolize the whole thing. Fair, right? So then this week, the EU is like, yeah, cool, go for it. We're going to let you go ahead and do the merger. And I didn't, I don't know that I expected that. I thought maybe the UK was going to start this trend of everyone going, oh, good. Oh, we don't want to either. But not the case, it seems like. In fact, it seems like the EU is in talks to approve the merger this week even, like as soon as this week. So um, Reuters was reporting that the acquisition is expected to clear due to the fact that Microsoft agreed to all these licensing deals with major competitors in the streaming making service. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like they made deals with NVIDIA, Ubitus, Boosteroid, which I've never heard of, honestly, until I was doing this research. So, it, but so on with things like that, that's probably streaming services in the other countries, which is why we wouldn't have heard of it. Um, right. So it also plans to bring more games to the market, um, like in Valve's Steam storefront, uh, Nintendo, believe it or not, was listed, um, all in a bid to help ease the fears for hindering the competition, which I think appeasing everyone's going to appease no one in the end. But the commission set a deadline for May 22nd, although it's expected to come out today. So maybe while you're listening to this, if you listen to it on Monday the 15th, the announcement may have come out and we could be talking about it in Discord right now for all I know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But they said it could be as early as that. So if it's approved, we will now have uh, Japan, Ukraine, South Africa, Chile, Serbia, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, and then now all of the EU has joined in. So that just leaves the UK. However, However. the UK was like, we're just going to block you harder. And this is what I thought was lovely. So they doubled down after all of this. And they made further restrictions on the deal in the UK. Jesus. <laughs> like now I'm like this is hilarious so um I think you're just making them dig their heels in now at this point but uh they went further to restrict it by acquiring an interest in each other so you're not even allowed to acquire an interest in each other they don't even want you buying like a percentage of each other at all like you just got to stay apart nothing in the UK should say Microsoft and Activision in the same sentence apparently so uh, it prevents businesses overall supposedly, but it's just funny that it's coming out, you know, with this uh, sure. from acquiring an interest in each other. So no company can, can do that. So including subsidiaries or businesses that themselves have interest in the companies already. So for example, Activision Blizzard cannot invest in Microsoft's Xbox game studios. Likewise, Microsoft cannot invest in Activision Blizzard subsidiaries, even including uh, the likes of King the company that makes Candy Crush. Um, mm -hmm. And then the order company should immediately notify the CMA if they have any reason to suspect that the order's been breached. So now they want you to narc on each other too, UK's like. <laughs> so I don't know that I understand how this is going to work being a global thing. Unless can you legit yeah. buy everywhere but like just England, Scotland, all of them just kind of get <laughs> out of the deal. Like I don't. What's going to happen here? I don't understand. Yeah, I, I'm a little confused by it as well because, I mean, I understand that there are different rules, regulations sure. in different countries. So when these acquisitions happen, I don't remember hearing a lot of pushback for other acquis acquisitions, mm -hmm. such as like the Disney takeover of all these. Right. But Perhaps they don't really operate on a global scale, if you think about it, because it's Does film and, and things like that. I feel like Disney would. Don't they have like a Disney in other countries, too? Yeah, but I mean, Maybe I don't not really... global, global, but I feel pretty much major countries that... Hmm, I hate to say but that, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> but no, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure that the acquisition of something like Marvel or uh, Lucasfilm would actually impact something on a global scale now video games on the other hand mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
that's a different story and how they operate, where they are made, where they're distributed. They've got all these different offices in different countries. So maybe it, I could see where the pushback comes in a little bit yeah. because you have these localization offices. You have, sure. And they probably have them w- with the other. Maybe I'm not thinking about that long term, but... Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it just... I don't remember hearing this kind of pushback with other acquisitions Unless people just don't like Activision. Maybe that's the thing. Like, they're all just like, screw you, Microsoft. You've been buying too much lately. Take a seat. You know? Take a seat and make some games. Go go be Ubisoft for a minute and make some games, Microsoft. Remember when you did that, too? Yeah. Let's just stop buying things. Anyway, I'm just being snarky. Uh, But I think it would be uh, just kind of hilarious to see how this goes down now. Like, just grab your popcorn because I think the UK is going to give us lots of entertaining stuff because, I don't know, the pettiness, I'm here for it, if that's what it in fact is. (laughs) You know, like, oh, everywhere else is going to do it? Well, I'm just going to block you harder and then we're going to do this now. Um, So, I don't know. Many argue the deal being blocked was a good thing. I'm one of those that I was kind of... I want Activision Blizzard's people to have, you know, better working conditions and get out from Bobby Fucktard is, you know, like mm-hmm. just get away from them all. And uh, was this the way? I don't know. I think I was only just looking at it. Well, if they make it better for the employees and fine, but I'm also, I don't want one thing owning all the things either because consumers right. get less cool shit when one person owns all the things. I'm just saying mm. we could have so much more cooler stuff by now. Like, imagine having a cell phone with a steady connection. Oh, yeah. Could you Wouldn't imagine? That be amazing? Remember what that was like? Mm-hmm. And so, if we didn't have like three people that owned all the phones, we'd probably have better phones. Yep. <laughs> I'm t- anyway, I could go on a rant. But anyway, so we'll see what's going on at the end of the day. It seems like all these corporations are either trying to make alliances or not with each other. And we're going to see who picks what fight with who. And I uh, guess who comes out on top in the end. <laughs> Hey, now that you've mentioned it, I want to throw this out there to not that I'm looking or anything. I'm just curious uh-huh. to all to anyone listening. I want to know who is your cell phone provider or who is the best cell, pro- cell phone provider? That, who do you feel like is the best? And can you even answer that question? Because you yeah. could ask me and I'd be like, I don't know that I'd say any of them. Because I've been through three now. Granted, one of them is <laughs> now defunct. Uh, I had Sprint initially, I did and too. they were all right. I had a Maritech. Then, oh, wow. That was my first one. Yeah, and then I think Sprint bought them, and then it all mm. went. <laughs> See, yeah. I even had Cricket. I think that was the very first cell phone that I had initially. Oh, yeah. It was Cricket. Then we went to Sprint. Then I went to AT&T because I thought, you know, hey, doing a bundle, that would be great. Yeah. No. No. And, then, and then... I got suckered in because our service around here was just not doing as well after we moved with AT and T. So I thought, well, let's try somewhere else. Who who's who has a good service around here? There's like, oh, Verizon does. And I was like, I've always heard bad things about them, but I thought I'll give them a try. I feel like I've heard the same things about them as I've heard about any other cell phone company at this point. Well, they they bamboozled me, all right. Oh no! And I'm so fucking pissed because when I got there and I was like, "Look, what I'm trying to do is I just want to get the same kind of phone service that I had over here, and if you can make it cheaper, Great. then that's what I want to do. If mm-hmm. you can't, just tell me now." And he's like, "Oh yeah, we can make it cheaper. We can do this, 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 this. and here are all these discounts." But see, what it don't tell you is that once you reach a certain point, that discount goes away. Or if sure. you pay off a device, that goes away. And all this, and it's like all these little the intro bullshit. fee to get you stuck. Yeah, in there. yeah, 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 yeah. And then suddenly, I noticed my. I mean, I'm paying right back to where I was. What I was paying with AT and T is like so. You you completely absolutely bullshit. Well, me. they know you really don't have choices where to go. What would be your other Clearly. option right now? T-Mobile bet- would be the only, the last vestige. Even where I live, there's about two people I can go to for internet. I am in Chicago. I am in the third largest city in the States, and I have two freaking options in the in the area that I live in Chicago for internet. That's ridiculous. Make that make sense, United States of America, who doesn't want mm. everyone owning all the same things. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 
it's uh, unfortunate when you don't have competition, we get garbage stuff. And it's just yep. because they know you're not going to go anywhere else because you don't have the choices. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Um, I just kind of thought it was hilarious that UK's like, oh, yeah, I'll raise you this block now. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about something a little bit more fun. Mortal Kombat 12. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Okay, so I've been checking out the Ed Boon tweets. I feel Mm. like you might be trolling a little or whatever, but it's fun. Um, Because he did tweet like, guys, I never confirmed there was another, that we were making another Mortal Kombat game. You know, and I'm like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm." Mm, but let's mm -hmm, talk about mm -hmm. that video. Did you watch the video that he posted? It was just with the clock. Uh, don't pick us all that one because I saw some video that said Mortal Kombat 12 is confirmed, but I watched it and I was like, where? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so this is going to be my theory. So the video that you're watching, it's a ticking clock. We're cl- mm. It's zoomed in on the you know left side of the clock. So the hand goes past nine, tick, tick, 10, tick, tick, 11, one, tick, tick, two. MK1 reboot maybe? Why would you skip 12? Yeah. Okay. So here's my theory. Uh Because I think I was talking to Eric about this in the Discord. If, spoilers abound, I just want to, I don't know why I have to keep saying this, but just so (laughs) you're aware. Everyone loses their mind if they, you know, I got exposed to it. At the end of Mortal Kombat 11, if Mm -hmm. you play the Aftermath story, which is the DLC, Essentially, the proper ending, to my understanding, was everything was pretty much reset. So, Liu Kang, in like a god Mm -hmm. form, reset. So, now he is the elder god who protects Earthrealm. Okay. So, Raiden is no longer that guy. Mm -hmm. It is now Liu Kang. He is the elder god for Earthrealm. Then they kind of flash back to Liu Kang meeting a young Kung Lao... Okay. who was the original uh, champion of Mortal Kombat. Like, when you read the lore of the original game, mm-hmm. he was the guy who defeated Goro way back when. Okay. And, you know, won Earth Mortal Kombat. So then that's why they're like, ah, you know, he was a legend. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious if they're not just going to restart from that. So everything's still in place. We have Liu Kang instead of Raiden. Mm-hmm. as the Elder God, and then we're seeing him train Kung Lao. So now we're getting a brand new story that would be a prequel to everything, okay. but also kind of a sequel based on where they left things. Okay, yeah. I All think right. that's where we're going with this. So then maybe my theory is right. Yeah, I mean, I think it I, would I, absolutely I, be right. I mean, I'd love to see it, I guess, in this day and age. Although, I mean, a place in my heart will still always be held for the FMV-ish kind of nature and the first time, like, oh, my God, Mm. the blood and the gore. Because, like, we've already upped that a million times over by now, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, So having a reboot would be interesting. What do you think that they could do differently to make it a little bit more? Because I, it would have to be for younger viewers who probably are viewers, listen to me, gamers who may not have even been alive. Because if you think about it... (laughs) It's coming up on its 30th anniversary, or did it already pass? No, I think it's this year. Okay, so there could be this new set of gamers that weren't even freaking around when that first came out. How do you think they would make it attractive to the newer crowd? Would it have to be today's graphics? It would just like have to be, right? Oh, yeah. No doubt they're not going to change their engine. I think their engine, they've they've started to perfect. So I mean, the I think we'll still... engine is pretty cool looking. I oh, mean, yeah. At least the results. Yeah, yeah. The last two games, I mean, they, they seem like they've worked off that same engine. And mm-hmm. I, th- I think it looked fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the level of detail alone and just mm-hmm. fatalities and everything. You're like, Jesus Christ. Oh, I know. Yeah. So I don't really know what you could do differently. If now, if they are going back to prequel, let's just call it a prequel. Okay. Uh, for, yeah. for fairness sake, uh, if they are doing a prequel, this gives them a great opportunity to create a brand new swath of characters like the Kung Lao that they introduced at the end of that game. This is not the one we are familiar with. This is a guy who's just his name or the future guy's namesake. Yeah. So this is an entirely new character. So for us, because we've never really gotten yeah. to know who he is. So he's a new character. 
And then if if you're in the past, say a thousand years or however long, I don't know how long. I can't remember <laughs> the, the lore. The, the, yeah. It's so, like but, once every 10,000 or some crap like that. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the whatever whatever, whatever it may be. <laughs> But you have an opportunity, so you're not having to just rehash this character, that character, that character. Now, obviously, someone like Shang Tsung, Goro, they would have to be there because they are kind of part of that lore. If you don't want to introduce them yet, mm-hmm. you can kind of put them off into the background, and then maybe they can be for a future installment. I just feel like you you have a clean slate here. Yeah. And you can do whatever. You do not have to reintroduce the same characters. And I understand that will be... Very, very controversial for a lot of people who are just like, why well, want this character? But yeah. what if you can have a character similar in some ways, but it's not that character? And then you can do something different. You, I well, just, I feel yeah. like you have an opportunity to do something I'm always completely for new. new. Yeah, I'm yeah. always for new. 100%. Give a new idea. I mean, we're still working off the same idea, I guess. But like a new story, a new entry. Yeah. Into the universe. You know, I'm always here for that. Something yeah. brand new, 100%. Um, so we'll see. I just only, I was kind of stalking his Twitter there, which by the way, again, Twitter. How come when I search Ed Boone, he's not the first one that pops up? Give me, give me a break with this garbage here. Why did I have to Google his Twitter handle to get it back? Because I didn't feel like going through all of my follows. Right. It was quicker for me to just Google it and go to his Twitter than go through my follows. I thought I could just whatever. Really, though? Really? He's not the whatever. Anyway, my complaint. (laughs) This isn't a complaint about Twitter nonsense, but still. Um, But I just wanted to also point out, I feel like nobody even in our Discord talked about it. And I tried to start the conversation with my GIF. Does nobody give a crap that Peacemaker and Homelander potentially could be the characters in the next iteration if they do do a 12? Because come on, Homelander for sure. Oh, yeah. I like Peacemaker. I don't see him at, well, I mean, it was, I guess, kind of a gory thing. But I feel like Homelander is way more violent. (laughs) Oh, for sure. Like 100%. Homelander would fit in 100%. Yes. I was just surprised. I was like, nobody's going to. Nobody's talking about that thing. I thought that was interesting and how mm-hmm. they fit, how they pull in all these new people that, you know, I don't know. The only, the only issue that I would possibly have with that is, again, if we're doing a prequel, then you're going to have to say, okay, time travel is involved. And that's how you get these modern day characters in this past setting. That would be uh, the only. Yeah. But again, I understand it's DLC. Yeah. Yeah. It's doesn't really just matter. Be a character that gets thrown in like the Terminator was or. Yeah. Uh, did he have a story? Uh, yeah, you could beat the game and then be like, uh, you know, the Terminator did this thing and it came back in time and then he stopped the Kronos and then uh, look what he did and oh, then yeah. they turned everything into a nightmare scenario. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, what a, you know, the the fake story that doesn't really matter. It's not the ending of the actual game because that's not the proper ending. I just go in and play some of the fights and then once the hubs has finished the story, then I can go play the towers and then that's what I do. Like mm-hmm. I never play through the story, which is weird. I would be the audience for just the story mode. Yeah. I just want to do the towers and stuff and they get super mad that I suck. <laughs> like, you know, that's just like mm-hmm. the joy of it, I guess, is just getting angry at the fact that you can't play the game. I don't know. Whatever. Sure. <laughs> now, you know what would be cool if they did a story mode is like have a uh, multiple path story mode. Mm-hmm. So, now, granted, obviously, there would have to be the one true path if you wanted to keep a, a narrative straight yeah. away or whatever, like they've been doing. But what if you could play the story? Because one of the things that you'll notice in the story modes is that you you fight someone and then the fight just ends. So there's no finishers, anything like that. So what if they give you the option and depending on your choice of mm-hmm. finisher, maybe you do a friendship, maybe you do a fatality, maybe you just don't do anything at all. They do the baby ones again or something. Yeah, yeah you can, so that opens up three different paths so if you do a friendship Mm -hmm. maybe that opens up some kind of narrative where you're just like all right well hey good fight whatever together and like you're just happy exactly together if you don't do anything and it's just like no finisher then maybe you just part ways if you kill the person they're out of the story so that could change something down the line think about it True. Choose if your they own wanted adventure. to write that much in, ooh, that would be fun. You I think it would it. be great. 
Come on, Nether Realm. You could do that. You could do that mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, Make yeah, for, for sure. Let's do it. You guys are good enough. I mean, we'll forgive you on the injustice nonsense, but you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll forgive you if you make this well. <laughs> now, think about that. The Homelander, that's the one reason I want to see him in there. Because uh-huh. think about that. They have had shackles on when it came to injustice, they couldn't kill like anybody uh... could do finishers like that. So here they could be like, okay, well, what if Superman did fatalities? Go. Oh, true. There would be your in to finally have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Since he's supposed to not. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. He's yeah. definitely the evil version. We know that's who it's based off of. 100%. Sure. Come on. <laughs> like, since we don't get to see it, what if, though? But what if? <laughs> but what if? And oh, God, what if? Like, mm-hmm. it's such. A, I, hope, I hope it's coming back and not. Stuck. I think it is. Yeah. And not stuck. I think it is. Like, like I know the, the writer strike again. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm the same way where I'm like, man, am I going to have like nothing? <laughs> like I'm selfish my, enough to be like, mm. I mean, there, there's plenty to, to kind of watch. I feel like to catch up on, but sure. I do understand that where you start to look and be like, man, where's my, where's my show that I like? Yeah. I'm scared it's, it's just going to die there. because like, it'll just too much time will have passed. But I think they can get away with it. I think they'll be fine. Oh, no, for if, sure. We'll all get by and we'll be fine. And there's mm-hmm. plenty of content in the world for me to consume. Let's be real. I'm never, I'm not going to be starved for content. I just have to look. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just going to tell everybody, if you're looking for something to watch, you can go to the YouTube page in which this <laughs> podcast is on. And there's, if you've not watched any of those videos there, yeah. I'm not saying it's fantastic content. But I feel like you could be entertained with some of it. Like maybe a little man cave. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little, maybe a little Super Mega Crash Adventures. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, a little Super Mega Crash Adventures. Little... Just saying. Just that saying. Means, Now's the time to there. boost up those indie people, I guess. Not mm-hmm. like to make them scabs or anything like that. But just like make your stuff. Do your thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. like we'll probably need it. Um, anywho, if you're excited for Mario, I think you're going to get it here very soon at home. Mm-hmm. May 16th. That seems quick. But today's, it doesn't matter anymore, I think, because I feel like most movies come on both now. VOD it, they or do the seem theaters. Like, but you know what? Again, I, as I've been kind of arguing, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mm-hmm. think I was talking about this with Lester on Horror Ramblings is we were talking about theater experiences and the Guardians experience. I don't know if I mentioned that or not last week where... I know you talked about seeing the movie because I wanted to yeah. know where the F word was, but I don't know if you talked about the experience. No, the experience was is that the theater in which I went to and have been going to because it's closer and it's convenient is starting to piss me off and we're mm-hmm. to the point where I don't want to go back because we sat there, you know, when it says the movie is supposed to start at four. Now, granted, I understand there's tons of commercials and... Is what but, it really means. <laughs> yes, but yes. But the commercial, but the the screen would be on. Yeah, they're oh, usually yeah. showing some kind of. Hey, it's Maria Menounos, and this is Nuvi, and look what we're doing, yeah. and we're showing you stuff. So, so stupid theater commercial too about going to buy popcorn and soda. Yeah, yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, no screen was on, and then four o'clock rolls around. Trailers? No. Nope. Because I was sitting there looking, and I was like, "All right, it's four o'clock, and the screen's not on, huh?" And then four or five. Screen's still not on. I was like, all right, something's up. So I wasn't the only one because someone got up, went out to the lobby. Yeah. Came back and he said, they didn't realize it wasn't on. Oh, good. So, so nobody came to actually check? No. And furthermore, the guy, and, and this is the other part of it that it's starting to kind of come to my attention as well on how much they give a shit, mm-hmm. is the guy said, well, what were they doing? He said, they were all sitting behind the snack counter at a table. And that's where I've seen most of these employees. They, they don't even have a, you know, like the the uh, box office where you get your tickets. Yeah. They're not, they, it's not even open anymore. You go to the concession stand to buy your tickets. Oh, wow. See, we buy yeah. online now. And I always have to just show the little thingy. So I can't remember the I, last time I've gone that. But that is, yeah. Well, I, I do the, the online tickets too. And one of the last times we went, they usually have a kiosk where you can just scan it. And then it'll yeah. spit out your tickets. Well, that thing was broken. So I had to go to the concession <laughs> counter and be like, hey, um, oh, damn. what? Uh, my, my tickets? And I'm like, oh, yeah, just scan it. And I was like, God damn it. So th- why do wow. I want to go back? This is yeah. this is exactly the problem when they talk about, well, why don't people want to go to the theaters? This. Yeah. This is why mm-hmm. people don't want to go to the theaters. Even the sound was off. Oh, my God. 
You know, that's just the basics of having a theater. Turn on movie, turn on sound. Exactly. (laughs) It's like. It was just, like, I don't know. So It was enough that I just knocked something off my desk. I was so irate. <laughs> but that that's my point. That's thats all I want to say. If you want people to come to your theater, mm-hmm. give us the proper experience. Don't give us some half-assed uh, experience also, where we the screen looks shoddy or it's off-center. The sound is off to where, like with Guardians of the Galaxy, I was expecting the music to kind of be, you know, just flowing all around loud, me. loud, yeah. It sounded distant. Like the music sounded distant and then like someone stepping or the sound effects were so much louder than the music. And I was like, I don't think this is the proper mix for this audio. So when I get it at home, I'm sure it's going to sound amazing. But you won't hear the dialogue at all because they still don't know how to mix their sound over uh, like dialogue. And it drives me crazy. (laughs) So with movies coming to streaming faster... Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me yeah. because theaters are not doing their part right. to want me to go. And clearly not taking care of the staff well enough to actually give two shits. I mean, yeah. that's one thing, too. Like, clearly, they've just got a whole mess of people that they decided to hire that's just using that as their hangout time and not actually doing anything. And I feel like sure. there would be a manager at some point to be like, hey, you need to work. Mm hmm. And I've never worked in a place that allowed you to like chill and have your break where customers could see you. Never. I've never worked in a place, even a mom and pop place that just one person owned. You took your break somewhere else. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, come here. Our theater is not like that. We've got several options. Well, I may have to, yeah. yeah. And we got the recliner seats. That's super nice. Like you could take a nap. They do too, which is funny. (laughs) Well... At least they're trying something. I don't know. I guess. They, I, I guess know. they think that makes up for the uh, lack of employee enthusiasm. I guess. Yeah, that's gone too far. That means that there's never been any repercussions if they're all that comfortable just doing that right out in the open. They yeah. know that like they're not going to get in trouble. So, yeah. You're going to yeah. need a new anyway. theater or they're going to have to start over. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I think you could just take it. I, I mean, you could buy it, I think, on the 16th. It's going to be VOD. Probably. It's not... Well, maybe it might come to one of your services. I don't know these days the way it works. Uh, as uh, soon as I cave and rent is usually when it comes on one of my services for free. Uh, same with Humble Bundle. As soon as I buy the game, it's in my next bundle. I'm like, God damn it. Uh, that was a, what did we say? That was uh, DreamWorks or no, Illumination and uh, Universal, I think is who released that, right? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. So that would be, I would eyeball Peacock for that, but I I would not guarantee a day and date with the the date that you're talking about. Oh, at like least for coming Peacock. out then. Yeah. No. Yeah. I would say give it another month after. Possibly. That sounds about fair. But yeah, you'll be able to rent it um, HD, Ultra HD. You know what I just noticed? I know we're going on tangents here. But like, so <laughs> the other night I watched Evil Dead Rise. I decided, screw mm-hmm. it. I'm going to buy it here at home just so I can watch it here at home. UHD. HD, Mm -hmm. SD, all the same price. Are we not going to pity the people who legitimately still have to use SD? Like, because that's that's an issue. If these poor people are still stuck on their CRT TVs that need SD, can you give them a break and make it cheaper for Christ's sake? (laughs) Here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. Buy the HD or the the UHD, and it has to scale back to SD. So if you don't have it, at least you'll have it for when you do have a 4K TV. Because if you're paying the same price, why not? Well, sure. But this is why I can't wrap my brain around why it's the same price. Yeah, that's the part that doesn't make any sense. I if feel like you caved to SD because it was cheaper and it was more economical for you. It made more sense to pay 10 bucks less or something. You know. Furthermore, furthermore, to, the, to, to your argument, by God, we're going to get these people. Okay, so <laughs> if I bought... Uh-huh. Say, uh, or if if I downloaded one of the my digital codes and uh-huh. it was an HD version, they're not going to upscale that to 4K. They're going to want me to buy the HD version. I didn't but, even see but, a 4K option. But, but, uh-huh. <laughs> so why should I have to pay to upgrade what I own? Sure. If, if everyone or all the, the tiers, SD, HD, and 4K are all the same price. Right. Ooh, good See what point. I'm saying? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense to me. No. no. 
Now, if there was a small fee, because I've done that. Say I've gotten, a, I have a DVD. Mm hmm and with voodoo you can scan the barcode and sometimes it won't be all the time but sometimes you can it's they call it a disc to digital conversion so okay. if you you want a digital version they will upgrade it to an hd version so you're not just getting an sd version you'll get an hd version and that'll be like five bucks okay if you wanted to add it to your digital collection and then you get an hd version now if you wanted to upgrade i think it was like a dollar or no 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 if you just had a, a blu-ray or something mm -hmm. like that and you just wanted a digital version it would just cost you a buck or two okay so it's just to buy pretty much what you already own but put it as a digital copy which is weird because the digital is like way cheap to put up come on guys but anyway right um, but again but yeah five dollars five dollars for that conversion mm -hmm. Two dollars for an upgrade conversion or whatever. Mm -hmm. So why can't I just pay an extra five to four k it up, right, or something like that? I why do I have to pay a full amount? It I doesn't make sense. I don't either. I didn't even see a four k option on a lot of them. So I was I was also confused because I thought that was kind of a standard offering for maybe more. But like uh, this day and I, age, I, I kind of thought maybe. There are some movies, like, yeah, there are just some movies that haven't made the jump yet, and I've noticed that. I kind of keep that, that's that's one of my goals now when I'm buying movies, uh -huh. is if I feel like this is a movie that will be on 4K very shortly, I, I wait, because I've been converting a lot of my stuff to 4K. I, one of my last mistakes was Army of Darkness, because I've been waiting for that to come some on Blu-ray. Some things can't go 4 k fied though. I'm just saying some things needed to stay SD. Because then it starts to look like, yeah, we're really on a set. Like, we're watching theater. Mm. Some things but, need to stay the way they were filmed. <laughs> like, I can't but that was, with the upgrading think, on everything. That was the last one I bought, I think, in Blu-ray and thought, nope, I'm not doing this again. If, yeah. I, if it's not in 4K, I'm not buying it. I'll just, I'll wait. Because every time I turn around, there's mm -hmm. something new. Yeah. Like, all the Superman movies got put on 4K. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get that eventually. Mm -hmm. They did a Star Trek package 4K. Yeah. There's a few of those I wouldn't mind having. And then Chucky. Remember how, I think, last year they did the first Child's Play, 1, 2, and 3. Uh -huh. Shout Factory did this whole set. And it was like, all right, cool. Well, at least that's the first three. That's neat. Then they announced just a few weeks back. They said, "Hey, the next four, they're coming to 4K." And I was like, "Fuck it, a." Hey. There you so go. So now, just get the whole I've box. got the whole collection. Boom, yeah. done. Done. And all because I waited. All right. I yeah, just, good for you. Usually, I don't do that. I can't believe that I was just like, you know what? I want to watch it enough right now that I'm just going to throw the money at it. And, you know, and I don't usually. Wrong with I always wait because I guarantee, goddamn, to you, it's going to be on like HBO next month or something, and then I'm going to kick myself. But it is what it is. Hey, that's the mistake I made with Megan. I I was anxious to see it. I bought it. And then they were like, oh, by the way, it's on Peacock. And I was like, you <laughs> yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to go on HBO or something anyway. Yeah. But I need you to see it, by the way, because I badly want to talk about it. But anyway. No, I, I do want to check it out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, but yeah, so all of that just to say, um, you can get Mario at home if you want for 30 bucks. Ooh, ooh. If you are willing Wahoo. to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yahoo. Ooh, uh, ooh, yeah. Another tangent, uh -huh. <laughs> but but related, related, related tangent. Okay. So if I can find the uh, the video, I might post a link down below. I found this video where someone did this animation, and it said Super Mario Land in seven minutes. It just happened to show up on my YouTube feed, and I thought, I'll give it a watch, see what it is, because uh, you know sometimes people's animation is kind of weird, and I, mm -hmm. it, I don't want no part of it. But right. I started watching it, and. It was actually some kind of interesting animation. Kind of reminded me of a particular style or a cartoon that I can't remember. But uh -huh. when I was looking, I was like, this looks so familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on it. But it just kind of did this TLDR version of the game. Oh. But with some proper animation, like hand-drawn animation about Fun. what's going on in the game. It went a little off the rails at the end, but that's kind of the game. That's what you and want. I don't know. I just I thought it was a, a kind of an interesting kind of take on everything. Yeah. He probably has other videos I just haven't checked out yet, but uh, I thought that's, well, that that's kind of neat. So I'll post that up uh, so people can see it. I might yeah. actually just put it in the Discord. Yeah, and then you'll have to join the Discord to see it. Don't Google yeah. it. The only place Ooh. you can find it is in our Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you, you, we hoard the You got to figure it out from there. Oh. Uh, Anyway, continue. Anyway, sorry. yeah, so it looks like we have a little team up going on here. I'm kind of curious to see what might kind of come out of this. Um, Pokemon Maker Game Freak. 
um, developing mm-hmm. a new action adventure IP code name Bloom, teaming up with Private Division, which is um, a 2K subsidiary 2k or yeah. take two. hold on i always do this backwards take two it's take two it's take two look at your notes lace you wrote it down <laughs> because you knew you'd screw it up uh so they had made a statement in a press release that this is going to be a new ip expected to launch during take two's fiscal year 2026 we've still got a ways out i just like hearing it's a new ip and i'm i always want to you know, curious about that I mean, y'all like them Pokemon adventures, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been doing those since forever. Um, So all I could find was this, just this article talking about the partnership and one piece of concept art that was attached. Um, So look at that. Rumor abound. Speculate all you want. Um, Again, I'm on board for new IPs and being sold as an action or an adventure. And they say tonally different from other works that they have developed. Sure. So, I mean, if you're talking Pokemon, then, yeah, I could see that you'd be a lot different if you're – I mean, you'd have to look at the concept art because it looks like um, the character that's kind of off in the distance with lots of really pretty trees and stuff in the background. But it kind of has, like um, – <sighs> trying to think of what the feel is more like like it, maybe it's a ninja type situation or gotcha. something in that vein um so i don't know let's see what they got um mm-hmm. private division uh put out games like hades outer worlds kerbal space program roller dome mm-hmm. which is the most recently so i mean they both put out pretty quality i mean private division's kind of hit or miss for me some of them are great some of them aren't but i mean teach their own with everything right like um right. takes all kinds so I don't know. I just wanted to mention they were coming together for a new IP and keep our eye on it. Maybe it would be something fun and cool, or it'll just end up being a copy pasta of some of the stuff we see today. I don't know. We've got several years to worry about that. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Is what it sounds like since uh, 2026 is when they think we're going to actually hear about it. Um, But yeah, I'll post that for you to see it so you could look at the picture at least. But that's the only thing that they have right now. Um, and then ROG Ally went up for pre-sale, pre-order. I want someone to get it that, um, lives around me so I can play with it. Okay. Cause like, I want to mess with it, but I don't want to spend six ninety nine for it. So all these rumors about how it was going to be so much more cheaper than the deck, um, kind of false. I mean, I guess it depends mm. on which version of the deck you get, but six ninety nine is not cheaper than the deck. Um, <laughs> but they are different operating systems. So really it's just going to be kind of, um, do you prefer Windows? Do you want to use Linux and kind of do your own thing? Um, so it's supposed to come out June 13th. You can do pre-orders now. I haven't heard about running out of stock or inventory. Maybe we're finally in the day and age where they're making a thing and can sell it. Um, I don't know if this is going to be another bot farmed thing. I'm hoping yeah. we're past that stage because like, you know, we're no longer in pandemic, right? So we're not going to screw each other over that way. We're going to find new ways again. But um <laughs> Uh, it does look kind of neat. I do, I do very much want to mess with this one. I want to see how it feels because the design is interesting. I don't know that I would enjoy the joysticks because again, I I like them on the same line. I don't like this cattywampus or whatever, like parallel lines for that. Um, I'm not used to it. Of course, I'm a keyboard and mouse all day, but when I have to use that, I'm, it's more comfortable for me to just have them on the same plane. You know, the same area. Mm -hmm. Um, Unless I actually could use the directional pad. But Mm. who who really uses that for, you know, movement these days? I mean, you know, I I find myself wanting to go to that when I'm playing Final Fantasy. But then (laughs) my hand is just like, go back to the stick. Yeah. And I'm like, but this is, it. no, back to the stick. And I just fight. Directional pad when I was playing that um, uh, rhythm game, like the one Mm -hmm. that I was showing you in Ohio, because it was like... it was just easier for me to hit on that directional pad than try to hit yeah. the joystick. Just one little thing. I'm like, I'm never going to get that. So we're just going to use the directional pad. But yeah, so I just, I do want to play with it. Um, this is a Windows based device. The specs look great. Um, so it's not like it's going to be a slouch, especially in comparison to the deck. It might even beat it in a couple of places. You know, I think it's just going to come down to how much the Windows absorbs your processes that's the biggest reason why i never downloaded it on the deck i don't know linux well i'll put that out there i i I, Mm. I, i've looked it up and things that i can do with it um i was considering downloading windows on it just because that's what i'm familiar with and what i know but man when you look at how much processes windows takes up as opposed to linux i'm like but all of that could be used for my game 
Mm-hmm. You know, so I just decided to not download the Windows. But I want to play with this one and see. Might end up being about the same in the end if Windows takes up that much processes. I'd be curious. I'd be curious. Sure. Because it takes a lot running in the background sometimes. Um, they've gotten better. Look at it, you Vista. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the biggest garbage mm-hmm. mistake I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, my God. Anyway, I, I'm sure they, they'll come up with more. Okay. Last thing I wanted to mention is I found this cute indie game. Well, maybe cute, however you want to describe it. There's no release date yet, um, but it's called Mouse. I think this might be one some of us might want to keep our eye on. Think of like Cuphead Noir first person shooter. I saw that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Music not as amazing, or at least from the trailer, definitely has that jazzy kind of old feel to it. Um, Looks like it could be fun. Supposedly, it's a private detective mouse that you're playing. Um, You know, if you fight your crooks, you fight the danger and uh, a noir FPS style. Uh, So it looks like Fumi Games developing and Mm -hmm. publishing. Uh, No release date yet, but you can go wishlist it on Steam and keep an eye on it. I don't know. I guess I should have looked if it's going to come out on others. Indie, I always just kind of assume it's going to be PC for at least the foreseeable future because it's usually cheaper for them to put it on PC before you start trying to like move it on to console. But I don't know for a fact. Um, right. But it's just TBA. So um, I added it to my wish list. I just want to kind of keep an eye on it and see because it looks interesting. I'm not usually an FPS person, but this is like maybe in enough of a different style that I might yeah. get into it. So uh, Mouse, go check it yeah. out, siblings. You might think it's cute and, and enjoy it. So that's all I got today. That's what mm-hmm. I what I cooked up for us to chat about. What you got for us? Well, I've got a story. You have a story time. I have a story. So for today's tale, I had to do a little bit of digging because I feel like I'm running low on some interesting history. Mm. Because there are sh- plenty of companies and people and games that I've not covered. Sure. But <laughs> the question is, are they interesting? Sure, yeah. So like, for example, the case of Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi. The answer is kind of, but not not really. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of passed on it. Like I, I was I was looking at the story and I was like, all right. So he created Final Fantasy, and it's got to be a great story, right? Right. I mean, ah. you, and it was just like, no, he just had the idea. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I just so pitched nothing, it. You guys got to make it. Yeah. So I mean, it, maybe maybe there's more detail out there that I just couldn't find. Mm-hmm. But what I did find, it was just like. No, he just, he came to the studio and he, and there was the idea and then they, they pushed back a little bit, but then he did it and then it was like, oh, that's cool. And then mm-hmm. the rest is history. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, shit. Right. <laughs> I just couldn't make a good story out of yeah, it. So, like, and it just stops. Yeah. So again, if there's more to that story and I just didn't find it, that's on me. But sometimes my, my research capabilities are limited mm-hmm. and I can only go so far. So anyway, uh, I eventually remembered a studio that I wanted to look deeper into, and luckily, it felt compelling enough. Even when I wasn't sure it was, and I kept digging, and then it got even more compelling, and I was like, okay, okay. If you're getting right. that interested in it, then yeah, yeah. it's time to uh, do it. Now, maybe it's not as compelling to other people, but I think it is. You know, this is just... Where I'm at with it, so mm-hmm. take it or leave it. This is what's happening today, and you'll love it or not. You can leave <laughs> anytime you things, want. I guess like. <laughs> now, anyway, uh, our story begins somewhere in the 70s, which you know always seems to be a fun time for video games. Right. Uh, but this time we're in Uxbridge, Middlesex, England. Hmm. Not a place we've normally started before. No. While some people are very forthcoming with information, there are others that aren't. And you'll find that out as we look into the story. So, so some of this could seem a little, uh, I don't want to say extravagant, but I can't tell you if what I've found, there are confirmations of this, Mm -hmm. whether you want to believe it or not. Let's just put it that way. So if something seems fantastic, I'm just telling you what has been reported to me. Sure. All right. All right, so here we go. Tell what people said. Now, don't hate the messenger. <laughs> now, we are going to focus in on two brothers, Chris and Tim. Now, the elder brother, Chris, had a very burgeoning interest in electronics and found himself tinkering with 
any kind of electronic device when he was a kid. Uh, he actually became so adept at it that he eventually built his own oscilloscope. And that's, uh, I don't know if you don't know what that is, it's used to display and analyze the little waveforms, like a little, you got the round screen and you'll mm -hmm. see like the little waves of the, okay. the, yeah. the voltage, signal voltage as a function of time, <laughs> as it were. Mm -hmm. David can go into greater detail in his, sure. in his room. <laughs> right. He can explain all about it. I know sure. he can. Now, Chris's passion led him to attend Loughborough University of Technology to pursue a degree in physics and electronics. But while he was there, he discovered computers. He began studying them and tinkering with them, and he actually made his own <laughs> using an RCA 1802 microprocessor. Then he turned around and taught himself how to program said computer using a signaling software for traffic lights. Okay. Yeah. So soon, computer programming became his growing passion. And they and still said, can't time those things out, just saying. Right. You know. Amazing. But he found this growing passion became all-consuming to the point that he decided he was going to leave university and focus on computer programming full-time. Now, he found his way into a job at a newly formed company called Associated Leisure, thanks to an old college friend, John Lathbury. Associated Leisure was created not only to import Japanese and American arcade machines into the UK, but to continue to support the needs of arcade owners. Now, some of his earliest responsibilities were fixing software bugs and doing some title conversions, say, for example, like Space Invaders to Galaxian. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that. Eventually, Chris convinced his brother Tim to join the company, which he did, and he went into graphics and design. Mm. He wasn't as uh, technically adept as his brother, but he was still pretty capable. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the company's director, Norman Parker, wanted to start his own company, and he saw the pool of talent sitting before him. So he asked the brothers and Lathbury to join him, and they did without hesitation. So they formed Xilic Electronics, which would become the second British company to manufacture and sell original arcade games that were sold in Britain or licensed to larger Japanese companies. The experience at Xilic would actually become invaluable to the brothers, as it not only increased their understanding of game programming, but allowed them to play with new hardware such as the Zilog Z80 chip, which eventually became the heart of the home computer, the ZX Spectrum, which was Britain's best-selling microcomputer. Ooh. Now, heading into the 80s, the Stamper Brothers, as we're going to call them from here on out, okay. took, which is Tim and Chris, <laughs> took note of the growing market of home computers. Together with Lathbury, the trio decided to walk away from Xilinx to form their own development studio that would cater to that market. They saw the potential in home computers. So specifically, they decided to focus on the aforementioned ZX Spectrum, which might have seemed like an odd choice at the time. But remember, they were in Britain. Mm -hmm. It was the hottest item in Britain. Yeah. And Atari might have been a, a home console king, but it was still kind of a home console, not quite a microcomputer. Yeah. It teeters a line, like you know what I mean? Bits, man. That's like what yeah. you're with. <laughs> yeah. And and not even good bits. We're talking like K. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess we gotta make that distinction these days. <laughs> so anyway, uh Based on early reports that describe their development process, the Spectrum made sense for them economically because it allowed them to finance the cost of development and provide revenue quickly. So their turnaround could just be like game, pop, game, pop, and they could continue to make games and finance everything. So it was a nice tunnel system that they figured out. Right. And... The, the hope was that they could make amazing games that would not only sell, but sell well. Because that would be the caveat. Sure. Just because you're making games doesn't mean they're going to sell. True. Luckily, these guys were able to pull it off with some amazing feats, cramming some amazing graphical features into a 16K package, which earned their unwieldy name, Ultimate Play of the Game. 
No. Yeah, it's not not a very good game. <laughs> very good name. UPG. Would made better sense if you're going to yeah, have I'll such a, a long name. Anyway, within a year of developing games for Spectrum, Ultimate, and that's where we're going to leave their name for now, <laughs> because we're not going to say the whole thing. <laughs> right. Uh, had several titles in the top 10 in sales for that year. The, this achievement would only be the beginning as they stepped up their game, no pun intended, but you know what? Screw it, pun intended. Pun intended. Uh, when Spectrum released their new 48K model. Ooh, Ooh 48Ks. That We're talking like, like a half day to download now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> their first title release with the newer, more powerful hardware was a follow-up to one of their first games called Jetpack. Its sequel, titled Lunar Jetman, added more complex gameplay on a much larger scale than its predecessor. While Lunar Jetman treaded similar ground, it almost seemed like a sample of things to come, like they were just testing testing to see what they could do. You mm-hmm. know, use some little familiar, see what, see what this new 48K uh, <laughs> triple power we- could do for them. Right, let's push the boundaries. And then every subsequent game released by the studio on the Spectrum 48K was an expansive, long-form game that was performing at arcade-level quality, something that was unprecedented at the time. Sure. At home? Yeah. Think about that. When you were playing old Nintendo games and you wanted the ports to be the arcade game, but they were never they as were good. They were never you're just... it. Drove me nuts. Mm-hmm. But you just <laughs> kind of dealt with it and was like, well, I guess... This is, this is as I good do. as it's going to get if I want to play it at home. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still not the same. It is not. Starting, with, or starting this trend with adventure title, and I hope I'm saying this right because it just looks weird, a tick attack. A tick attack. A tick attack. That's what it looks like. A tick I mean, attack. It's fun. It's fun uh, they, <laughs> they continued with a string of hits such as Spin Dizzy, Saber Wolf, Exile, Head over heels before reaching their pinnacle at the end of 1984 with the simultaneous releases of Night Lore and Underworld. And that's Underworld. They spell it stupid. World. Like W U R. Yeah, W U R L D E. Oh, even with an E. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're fancy. They are British. British, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you got to throw that E on everything and an R at the end of an mm. A word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, not trying night- to be fun, but it happens. I've listened. <laughs> night lore would be lauded for changing the adventure genre forever by changing perspective. The game developers at the time were limited by the technology they had, having to adhere to the realm of 2D. Mm, now, yeah. some developers at the time, such as David Brabin and Ian Bell, had proven that true 3D graphics were not impossible with the release of Elite, one of the first home computer games to use wireframe 3D graphics with hidden line removal. Hmm. But it was, uh, how do you say, just time-consuming, just grueling programming that they had to go through to do that. Impressive, but oh my God, exhausting just to pull that off. But Ultimate took the next step and found a way to blur that line a bit. You get the benefits of 3D, but without the hefty cost. Okay. All by using isometric perspective. Okay. Okay. Ironically, they weren't the first developers to utilize this style, as games like Zaxxon and Qbert kind of already did that in Mm -hmm. their own way. Yeah. But Knight's Lore was just the first time it was applied to something more ambitious. Because this game became a massive hit, and it was praised by critics for being unlike anything they had ever seen at the time. One critic even compared it to being an audience member during the very first showing of King Kong. Like, what your eyes are seeing. Holy shit. This is, you know, groundbreaking. Another critic called it the greatest single advance in the history of computer games. Ooh, there you go. Now, obviously, if you looked at it today, you'd just be like, I don't understand why, but We've at the time... We've got to take things in the times they were invented, people. Yeah. We've yet to the see the time. coolest thing still even, you know. I mean, think about it. If you were to see uh, Pong, and mm-hmm. you say, this is first video game, mm-hmm. and this is the only video game you're aware of, 
And then someone came over here and said, well, here's Super Mario Brothers. Right. Your mind would be like, this is a video game too? Yeah. This is... I remember the how it looked the jump from Super Mario Brothers to Super Mario Three and going, whoa, yeah. it looks so much more cleaner and yeah, mm-hmm. same system. Before long, wouldn't you know it? Mm-hmm. Every developer was taking note and making copies, <laughs> making the copies. Because, you know, that's the trend that always happens when something is popular. (laughs) Everybody has to make an isometric game now and try to be that. Were they all as good? No. No. Because they didn't understand all the things that had to go into it. Mm -hmm. It's not just about looks, baby. It's got to be our our first shovelware. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now, one little detail that makes this even more fascinating, at least for me is Night Lore is the third entry in the Saberman series, beginning with Saberwolf, followed okay. by Underworld. However, Night Lore was completed before Saberwolf. Okay. okay, yeah. Before Saberwolf, but the Ultimate Company or Ultimate as a whole did not believe the market was ready for such a game yet. Now, think what? about that. Why? They saw what they had created, but did not think the the audience was prepared for this just yet. Okay. So, they held on to it, uh-huh. released Saber Wolf, which became a success, then released the other two just to see how that would go. And then, yeah. obviously, Night's Lore was the big phenomenon. So, they knew what they had. Interesting. All right. Respect. I would have been scared someone was going to come behind me and. <laughs> yeah, and then, no. Like you're screwed. Yeah. So I think knowing such a minute detail speaks to Ultimate's technical abilities and their business ingenuity. Mm-hmm. They knew what they had, they knew, they knew how to play it, yeah. and it paid off. However, like most things, the gaming industry will only praise you for so long. Because in 1985, after the release of their next title, Alien 8, it seemed that gamers and critics believed that Ultimate just couldn't follow through with another amazing title. Like, they were just a one and done, even though they'd done a lot of great things before that. Yeah. They finally hit their pinnacle, and people were like, eh, eh. Because some felt that their subsequent titles were just regressing, and they were just less interesting, and it was just like, eh, just meh, meh, meh. Yeah, yeah. And it's wasn't helped by Ultimate going against one of their core rules, which was to program everything Mm in-house. It seems when they branched out to other consoles outside of Spectrum, they hired outside contractors who did piss-poor jobs, which then poorly reflected on Ultimate. Okay. You know. And it's amazing that in less than a year, Ultimate went from icons to hacks. (laughs) Right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But that sounds very plausible uh, as something that would happen today because oh, we're sure. so quick to turn on someone in, in a heartbeat. Before we know what's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Accuse, apologize, never. Yep. Now, it seems that this would have signaled the beginning of the end for Ultimate. At the start of 1986, the Stamper Brothers decided to sell Ultimate's game catalog to U.S. Gold, ironically, a British company, (laughs) primarily aimed at publishing games imported from the United States with a lower price tag in Europe. With the company dissolved, Stampers and Lathbury went their separate ways. And if I were to end the story here... It might seem like a sad end to some impressive talent. But remember, they are impressive talent. And they are always looking ahead. For you see, the fall of Ultimate wasn't due to a lack of passion or critical response. At the time, game piracy was on the rise in the UK, and Ultimate had been looking at ways to combat this problem. And one option that presented itself to them was to develop for home consoles. Mm. While there were a handful on the market, one that, there was really only one that caught their attention. You see, back in 1983, the Stampers had heard about this other company out of Japan called mm. uh, God, uh, Nintendo. Yeah. I think maybe? that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. About that Any, time. Mm. Anyway, they, they were like this little penny ante 
toy yeah, company. Like, what are they thinking? And they, they'd created some device called the Famicom, and oh. apparently it was just this big hit in Japan, you know? And, right. and the Stampers heard about this newfangled gadget, and they were just like, man, we, we kind of want to develop for that, you know? Yeah. That would be kind of neat, you know, from everything that we've heard. Well, when the Stampers approached Nintendo about developing, they said no, uh, almost immediately, because they were not in the habit of granting license to just anyone. True. As we all well know. And at that time, they definitely did not want to sublet to anyone outside of Japan. But they're not ones to give up at the first roadblock. So the Stampers got their hands on a Famicom. Mm -hmm. They reverse engineered the machine. (laughs) (laughs) And then they developed a demo to showcase to the company. All right. But they still had to get back in Mm -hmm. because they were met with immediate no. So they figured, well, what's another way we could do this? Yeah. So they reached out to an old friend, Joel Hochberg, who actually had a long-standing relationship with Nintendo. Hochberg arranged a meeting with uh, the Stamper Brothers and Nintendo President Minoru Arakawa. Arakawa got to see their demo, and he was so impressed with it, he signed them on the spot. Ah. So this family computer machine had the potential to break out of Japan and become a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Spectrum was never going to achieve that level of success. And furthermore, it was apparent that the brothers knew that the machine was capable of so much more than the Spectrum. They could see it, Mm -hmm. you know, just in the way the games were presented. You could see what more it could do. Yeah. The Stampers also knew that Nintendo was in it for the long haul. That they were planning world domination. Ah, yeah. Okay. Cut to 40 years later. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. They wanted in on that action. Mm -hmm. Again, always looking ahead, being very perceptive. So with the sale of Ultimate, the Stampers, along with Hockberg, formed a new studio that would go on to develop games for Nintendo. The demo that the Stampers showed to Arakawa became their very first NES title, Slalom. I think I'm saying that right. There's two two L's right next to it. Slalom. It is a single-player game in which players race downhill in a series of slalom skiing races. This was then followed up by Wizards and Warriors, RC Pro-Am, Anticipation, John Elway's Quarterback, Marble Madness, Battletoads, the list goes on and on and on. This new developing studio known as Rare would go on to develop some shall we say, more interesting titles on the NES? Maybe so. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't for naught. Okay, so some may look at some of their early work on the NES with a few shining examples, as I mentioned. But then there were a handful of licensed games that uh, maybe aren't really all that great. When I'm looking at, specifically, it was Roger Rabbit. You talk about a confusing game yes. but i played the hell out of it yeah. i did <laughs> i mean you just played what you had we didn't have all these options mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever the pawn shop had is what i played so. right but many of these licensed games that rare took on were for the sake of learning the tech mm. they wanted to see what they could do by the tech yeah. in fact chris stamper became so proficient with the console and i'm telling you this dude's a fucking genius mm-hmm he was able to develop his own handheld version of the NES prior to the Game Boy. Wow. What? Okay. Why weren't we yeah. putting this guy to real work here? Like, <laughs> unless they were and you're going to finish the story. And I, whatever. <laughs> Eventually, Nintendo was so impressed with Rare that they decided to purchase a quarter stake in the company, which eventually grew into a 49% share over time. Now, once they reached that milestone, Nintendo allowed Rare to tackle some of their own IP, mm-hmm. thinking, hey, we're kind of invested in you guys. What, did, what could you good. do with uh, something new? Some, what, something else that we, we kind of had on the back burner for a while. What, mm-hmm. what, what can you show us? So using technology that they acquired from investing in Silicon Graphics, Rare developed the groundbreaking Super Nintendo title Donkey Kong Country, mm. which began a string of even bigger hits like the Donkey Kong Country sequels, its Nintendo 64 follow-up, Donkey Kong 64, Killer Instinct, 
Blast Corps, Jet Force Gemini, Banjo Kazooie, and of course, Golden Eye. Uh, there you go. Despite amazing output, though, there was always strife within any company. Hmm. During the latter part of the 90s, it seemed that employees did not care for the demands of their bosses, which were the Stamper Brothers. One report mentions that their expectations from employees were to work 15-hour workdays. Oh, God, he started crunch, eh? Nope, 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 nope. Follow <laughs> okay, me sorry, up. Sorry. Follow me here, okay? No. Now, in this day and age, we're all aware of crunch. Yep. This sounds... I mean, this Very is crunch. Very like it. <laughs> But I want to point out one thing, okay? Now, again, I don't want to advocate for crunch here, yeah. but I want I want to explain just a few details that I feel like make them different from other game studios. Okay. So, during the early days at Ultimate, and even prior to that, the Stamper Brothers were known for working 18-hour days, and they believed that part-time work resulted in a part-time game. That's their work philosophy. Okay. okay. Furthermore, as chairman and technical director at Rare, Chris Stamper would still continue to code for games. And Tim would still work on graphics while serving as the company's managing director. At least they worked, I guess. <laughs> you know. That's kind of where I'm at. They were leading by example. They were not asking for they were their just employees to in their do their ivory tower wedding their next paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were not asking the employees to do anything that they were not willing to do themselves. Which is a far cry from what we see of all chairmen and CEOs today. I don't think any of them know how to make a game. They just no, they know how guarantee to supposedly run a company. <laughs> now, again, I don't want to advocate for crunch. I understand this is not a work ethic for everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would be able to do it. Oh, uh, hell no. There's if, nothing I love that much. <laughs> if I were a single person with no other responsibilities and I was just in, had a passion for it, mm -hmm. yeah, you bet your ass I'd probably be in there just like yeah. cheering away at it because I wanted, because I can get obsessed when I'm in the middle of creating something and not to be bad guys here in the traditional sense because at least they were doing it too. They were saying, we're doing it. This is our philosophy. You're at our company kind of be within our philosophy I, sure. but again however they had to know they were a little bit psychotic for wanting to work yeah you know 18 hour days and then maybe sleeping the last six hours of the day like yeah no what do you when do you are you napping i don't know i don't know, I don't know. so again <laughs> it's it's a hard argument to make because i again i don't want to advocate for crunch and i understand no. 15 hour days fuck that Eight is enough. <laughs> oh, I thought you said eighteen hour days. Well, they they did but... they did eighteen hours. They were only oh. asking for fifteen. They were only asking for fifteen. Yeah, only asking for five 15. days a week, or six, or the whole week, or all of it. They wanted all your time. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if I put that detail in here or not. I'm just we'll curious, get to like it. how many days in a row they thought this. They was supposed to be. they mentioned working three hundred and sixty four and a half days a year. That was them. They okay. said that they only took Christmas morning off. Every other day they were working. Again, okay. not right. for everybody. Right. Yeah. And if that's I get what it. you want to do with your own life, your own self, then fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this internal strife led to a decline in Rare's quality of work. Obviously, we've seen that with Crunch. We get it. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, increases in game development costs were starting to hurt the company and they look to their, you know, biggest stock owner, Nintendo, for a little bit sure. of support. Well, Nintendo decided, nah, it's, we're not interested. And they didn't even really express any interest in acquiring the rest of the remaining stake in the company. They were just like, eh, it's okay. <sighs> so, having no other options, what did Rare do? They decided to look for potential buyers because they were in a rut and they needed help. And the one yeah. person they expected to help them chose right? not to help. So, Nintendo. Ironically, back and forth, how I love them sometimes. Like, they just sometimes it's amazing, and sometimes I'm like, What are you doing? I don't know. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Ironically, if you think about it, Activision and Microsoft were the two companies eyeballing Rare the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> so, no matter how this went down, oh God, it could, it would still all have wound up in the same place. It's funny. Yeah. So, 
They were looking, both making different but unique offers. Uh, seeing the sudden interest in the company, guess who decided to throw their hat in the ring? Mm-hmm. Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, what, 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 what about us? It's like, no, 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 no. We asked you. Yeah, you, we came to you first and you said no. So they chose not to re- entertain their offers because I would. why would you? Screw you. We yeah. tried. We yeah. came to you first asking for help. You said no. So you put mm-hmm. us our back against the wall. This is where we're at now. Now you want to help? Fuck you. Yeah. So the Stampers uh, were more intrigued by Activision's offer, but Microsoft you know was offering they the m- <laughs> they were offering the most green, so mm-hmm. they went to green. They they were like, yeah, yeah we kind of need the money. Uh, I don't really know what the detail, the other interesting, intriguing elements to Activision's offer were, but right. if I could ever find that out, I'm curious. Like, what was it about that offer that sounded intriguing? Because there's a part of me that does... Granted, as I said, we know that they could still have wound up in the same place. But I would also like to know what it would have been like under Activision. You know what I'm saying? At that time. At that time. That's, yeah, that's an interesting... Because they were still sort of newish, eh? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. They were were finding their stride around this point, I feel like. This is where their their biggest hits were really just jamming out. And people are like... We're starting to know who they are. Rare's the shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, this uh, buyout was not the fix to the problem. In fact, depending on who you ask, Microsoft's acquisition marked the end of an era. No game post-Nintendo that has ever been developed by Rare has been met with the same level of praise or success, and that's even counting their ultimate days. Wow. Chris and Tim saw the writing on the wall pretty early on and left the company in 2007. They remained out of the public eye for a decade before returning to the industry as investors in the mobile game company Fortune Fish, which was founded by Tim's son, Joe. Yeah. Now, Even in the family. Rare is a company whose glory days are behind it, which is a damn shame considering what could have been. While I can't say that Nintendo acquiring them or even Activision acquiring them would have fixed any internal strife, mm-hmm. I do do believe that the company's creativeness wouldn't have been stifled for five years working on some bullshit motion control device that hardly worked because somebody wanted to emulate Nintendo's new hit product and they had to be in the the zone too. Mm -hmm. While it's bittersweet for someone like myself. Yeah. The Rare Replay is available for those who didn't get to experience the company in their heyday. While Ultimate Play of the Game was such a Odd mouthful. <laughs> yeah, right. Rare, on the other hand, was on point. While they aren't the only innovative developing team to grace the industry, you'd be hard pressed to find another like them. No doubt. And what I was gonna say, rip, mm-hmm. rip rare. Fun. Oh man, so are they still doing stuff? I hope. Uh, Maybe the kids are. Kids are keeping it alive. I don't know. If you look at their, I mean, they've been trying to revive stuff, but Microsoft really just shattered that company to the point where even when you look at what they're doing now, it's like they're trying to revive old titles that people remember. And it's like, yeah, but you, you fucked it so hard. You kind of caught and killed it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, they're still trying that, it seems. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, Microsoft still be Microsoft, and it sounds like they haven't changed at all. Nope. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, that's our show. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. You can hit us up sometime on Twitter at Super Mega Crash. I don't know. I feel like we need to put something new in there other than Twitter. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to do something here soon. (laughs) Like, even I don't go to Twitter. Why am I telling you guys action? Call to Twitter! And uh, you can't find us anyway. Uh, Or go to Instagram to view the weekly icon art. Stephen puts time and love into you. Uh, Send us an email to supermegacrash at gmail.com. And you can also support the show by liking and leaving reviews on your preferred podcast app. And even going to patreon.com forward slash pencil and paper productions. And as we were saying before, you want more entertainment? Head on over to youtube.com forward slash pencil and paper productions for more than just podcasts lots of fun um come join our discord help make us great uh links are in the description down below thank you for listening i'm lacia finley and i'm Stephen white join us again next time super mega crash siblings but until then game on
This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.